Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to have a look at creating a Gantt chart in Excel. So on the screen, I've got the completed Gantt chart so you can see it all. What you have is a, a conditional formatting bar to give you the day, today's date and a scroll bar at the top to rotate through the weeks of your project. So this is just week two of this project showing you the tasks there and a completion bar, a status bar, which is indicated in conditional formatting on these gray bars as well. So if I come back across, you can see those, how they work. A few just columns there working out the duration and days complete against days to do. It's not an exact science and the completion bars are not going to be going across if you just type 10%. But basically on a four day task like that, if I type 50%, that will just show you two days complete and two days to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this one down and start from scratch and, and let's go through it together. So let's just get rid of this. And we'll save it. So I've got one already set up with some information that I'm going to use. So I'll just put rows on here. So we've got some lines. Um, so I want the top line, the middle line and the bottom line just to show that. There's a grid. So we've got progress, uh, progress column and a start date and so on and so on. But we need to get the dates working first. So in cell I5, I'm going to put today's date in there with a control and semicolon. Now that is only showing the ninth because it's uh, remembering the format that I had here before. Now, what I've done with the format, if I do control and one to get into format cells, go into number and then custom, you can see I've just put that as DD. If I put three Ds and click OK, you'll see that that will now show you the day instead of the zero nine. I'll just undo that, control Z. So that's staying like that. Now, underneath that, I want that to... Um, I do want that to stay as 09 actually, so I need to go back in there. And just tick just two Ds. So that is the today's date. Now underneath that, I'm just going to go equals that. But I want this to be, um, tell me that it's a, a Monday. So basically I need to format this to show me a Monday. Now, if I go back into, if I do control one again, if I put one D there, which is what you might think you can do, if I click OK to that, it just comes up with a nine. So that isn't going to work for this. So what I need to do is put this formula, I've got it down there for you, look, so you can see it. I'll do the text bit first so you can see how that works. If I type equals there, then the text function, open the bracket, click on I5, that's what I want. And I want it formatted with three Ds, which is what you have to have if you want the day. And if I just close that bracket and tick that, you can see that's going to come up with Monday. But I just want it to say M for Monday. So that's where this left function comes in. So in front of all that, I'll type left, open the bracket. And at the end, I go comma one character from the left, close the bracket. And that should just give me the M. Now on this one, I just need to go plus one equals that plus one, which will give me the next day. And then if I just follow that across and pull this across, you've got Saturday, Sunday. Now if I need to sort of center align all these, I think. So they're sitting underneath each other like so. Now on the top, I want another formula so you can see that i've got merged cells but i wouldn't have had merged cells so i'll just start there equals this that's today's date then i'm going to merge cells so it's all in one and then i'm going to bring that one back in so it's all in fact i'll bring them i'll just highlight those all and just bring them in a little bit like so and if i put a grid line on these so they stand out a bit, so you can see that little block there. So that's how I formatted that. So that was the, the first part of this. So now I need to 
do a project start date. Now the project start date needs to be uh, today's date, but I want it the long date. So I'll go up, up here and select long date. And it hasn't done anything for some reason. Strange. I'll type it in. I don't know why. Okay. Well, it would help if I type the date in. That's why it didn't do anything. Uh, put the date in, but I don't want it like that. I want it to be formatted slightly different. So if I do control one and go to custom, I've got all this stuff in front of that, but I just want this to be, um, get rid of that. I want one, two, three, dash, like that. So it's going to go Monday, November 8th. That'll do. Okay. So that's my date. Project week. Let's just put a one there. So what I can do with the project week number is I can create what's called a little scroll bar to increase that um, by scrolling along. Now to get that, you need the developer tab, which is there. If you haven't got the developer tab, you need to go file options, custom, customize ribbon and um, tick developer. There it is. And then click OK. And then it will appear. So on the developer tab, you've got this little section here called controls and in there there's insert and the control i want is this scroll bar and then you just basically draw across the top of the screen not too big a little scroll bar and then what you have to do while it's still selected is right click on it without moving your mouse get yourself into format control and then you give it a cell link so the cell link for this is going to be the week the project week and then you don't need that on 10, so I'll just put that back down to 1. And then click OK. And if you click off that, when you scroll along this bar, that number's going to increment, which is great. So now, how do we get this to link to that? So basically, what we have to do is use this function. But before I do that, I want to um, name a few things. So this cell, I want it to be called um, Start Project. start project and uh, this wants to be the week so I'm just going to call that week make sure you press enter to do that so I've got two names there now so now I can link this cell with this formula so this is going to be equals d4 I could have typed the name but d4 and then minus and then you need to use the weekday function weekday gives you the day number of the week and then um, this again start project comma and I want to do a comma it gives you the numbers of the week so I want it always to start on a Monday so starting on Monday so that one so three I want just to double click that and then close that bracket that's the weekday function and then I need to add that to the week so the week, which is a name, and then minus one, so minus one week off, close that bracket, and then times that by seven. So I'll times it by seven at the end. And if you're wondering why I'm tying that time isn't that by seven, watch. Oops, tight missed it, missed something out. Um, minus one should be in there. So we're on the second there, so I've gone back a seven days. If I put if I put change that to minus three, so the ninth today, it's only gone back three days. So we're on the ninth today. So that's why that formula says seven. So it goes back seven days. Seven. Just tick that. So that was that one. So now what we need to do is do some conditional formatting in this area. Um, I might have already got that on there actually. If I remember. No, I haven't. So, what I want is a data bar to go on here based on the progress. So, if I just put, um, I'll format this to percentage first. So, format to percent, and just so we can see the top one. If I put percent there, 50%. So, I want all of these to have a data bar on them. So, if I go data bar, pick a color. Whichever one you want. 
that one. So at the moment that's not correct, so I need to go and edit that because I want it to represent a percentage. So if I edit the rule, change both of these to number and set this one onto one because one is 100% and then that should go back like so. So if I type 10%, it will not be as far across. So 100% will go all the way across. That's it. So let's do some dates. So if I start date, today, end date, um, 11th of the 11th, 20. Like so. And then if I just pull these down to the sequential for this example, and I can change a few of them later on. Right, they're all two day tasks. So if I make that a, this top one a, take that to 13th. So the duration is going to be equals the end minus the start. Tick. So that says four days, the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. So that's five days actually. So I need to do a plus one on the end of that. So if that was the 10th, it's two days, that's right, because it's all of the 9th and all of the 10th. That's when it ends at the end of the day on the, on the 10th. So you can then just double click that down. So days complete would be equals um, that duration times the percent complete. We take that, so one day complete, 0.3, and three days complete. And then work remaining is just going to be equals duration minus days complete. Take that, double click that down. So I think that's okay. And if we want to put zeros in this, we can do not started or not complete. That's okay. So now what we need to do is for this bit, we need to get this to follow on. So this is just a plus one. So it's going to go a bit weird here if we just pull it across. Not liking that. There's a merge cell somewhere. So let's just try this. Saturday, Sunday. Let's go on for another. Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, let's just do three weeks and then that should just pull, up, pull across in blocks. It does. And you can sort that out later on if you want to make it tidier. Now what we need is with conditional formatting, we need the tasks to show up on this area. And this is the form that we're going to use. I just need to name some extra cells. So I want to name um, the start and end tasks. We haven't got that and the progress task, that column. So I'm going to formulas and name manager. So I've got two there that we did earlier. So if I go new and if I go task start, it wants to be in this sheet only sheet and task start is there. I'm taking it up one cell. I might have to adjust that later on. If it doesn't work, I'll just test that out, but that's okay. And then new task end task end sheet and that cell and I actually forgot to take off the dollar sign I need to make this relative so I'll have to go and edit the other one um, task start edit I need that dollar, dollar sign off there so it's, it is column D but the rows are relative and then one for progress call it um, just progress sheet and that will be that one take the dollar sign off the seven okay like so so that's all right now we need to do the get these tasks on there so this is this task list and if i highlight this area obviously you highlight all the area that you want go back to home conditional formatting manage rules new rule formula option and then you type in equals and you type in what it says there now we're looking at i5 which is the date the second at the moment because i've got that on zero so it's gone back a week 
So it's if you look at it, it's got dollar signs in there. So you're locking the five, the I dollar sign five is greater than or equals to dollar sign D8, which is the start, the first start one, D8, comma. I've missed off the end, haven't I? And open the bracket, comma, and then if I5, so I dollar five is less than and equals to E8, E with a dollar sign in front of the E to lock that, eight. That's it. So that's the test. So basically you're picking up dates between those two. Format, whatever color you want. So gray I'm going for, click OK, click OK, OK again, and it puts them on there nice and neatly for you. So the next step is if you wanted the today marker, which is the ninth, again, you need to have this highlighted like so. Conditional formatting, manage rules, new rule, formula again, equals. So we're still on I5, I dollar five. So sell I5. If I5 equals today, today is a today function, which is the computer clock. And you want that to be whatever color you want. So I want that red, a red bar, but I also want the border to be red if it goes over the top of any other color. Click OK to that. OK. OK. And there it is for today's date. If I use this arrow to go back or forward, should I say, you can see it moves with everything else. So everything's moving. So the last thing to do is to create some sort of progress bar to sit on top of these. OK, so this is the form that we're going to use. So it's an AND function again, and it's looking at the names, um, task start and progress and task end. We just need to get that into conditional formatting. So copy that, highlight it. I've put the formulas at the bottom there so you can see rather than try to stop this video and rewind it all the time to see the formulas, which is what I have to do in lots of videos, which is really irritating. So hopefully that's helpful for you. So we go new rule using a formula, we click in there and we type equals and then we paste it in. Now, if you don't type equals, it puts text symbols around it and then it doesn't work. So format for this, this is going to be the completion. So I'm going to go for mustard color and then OK and then OK again and then OK again. And you can see that it colors them in. Now, it doesn't do the 10 percent like I said at the um, beginning but this one is um, let's go for 50 percent fills one in but you can see that that is working if I do 100 percent it fills it in if I do 50 percent it does the first day so 50 percent is half this third day is half done so it's not mega mega accurate and I'm sure there is other formulas you can use to fill that in so it does fill it in properly but then you've got this um, so what is this formula doing? It's and, so both parts of this need to be true. The one in front of it is just to make it um, a one or a zero at the end, but you could have used an if statement there, if and, and then one or zero, if you wanted to use that. But basically it's looking at the start date, if today's date is greater than the start date and less than the start date, plus whatever the progress is against the start date minus the end dates minus the start date. That's what that's doing. Now, this is obviously just a very, very simplistic um, example. You can do a lot more complicated things in Microsoft Project. Um, if you've not got Project though, this is a, a good tool to use. There are some good templates that come with Excel that have got this already set up, but I find them quite hard to get your head around. So if you can do it yourself, you probably you'll find it easier to use. But that's all I want to talk about in this little video. So thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.